Maybe you also want to add a central door locking system to your car, or some cool LED lights to light up your dirty footwell, or a charger for your constantly dying phone, or you want to enjoy some really fresh brewed coffee on your way to work. Whatever it is that you want to add to your car's electrical system, in this video I will show you how to properly do it using an add a fuse adapter. Here we are at my desk and you can see all the materials that you are going to need for this project. First of all those piggyback or add a fuse adapters. They come in two sizes, one for normal and one for mini sized fuses. You need to make sure to purchase the right one depending on which kind of fuses your car uses. Also you are going to need a suitable fuse for it, some wire, some zip ties to secure the wire, and some isolation tape which is always helpful. Also a switch. I use a very small one because I only need to handle 3 amps and this switch can handle up to 5 amps but if your circuit uses a higher current you need to make sure to get a bigger switch or use one of those relays because you obviously don't want to set your car on fire. Next thing you're going to need are those crim connectors. Three types of them. Flat connectors, ring connectors for grounding, and those connectors that probably already come with the added fuse adapters. Next thing and last thing is of course your device. In our case it's a 5 volt phone charger that offers a 1 amp and a 2 amp output. So those were the materials. Let's head to the tools. The set of tools you will need to get this job done is actually pretty simple. You only need a multimeter to measure out your fuse slots, a pair of pliers and a wire cutter, a crimping tool, you can also crimp using your pliers, but a crimping tool is very helpful. A screwdriver with lots of different kinds of bits and nuts to unscrew your trim panels. And those plastic tools, they are also not essential, but they will help you removing your trim panels without causing at least too much damage. A flashlight might also be helpful, and you're probably gonna need a drill to drill holes for wires and switches to go, uh, to go through. Now you have everything you're going to need. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is locate your fuse box. Your owner's manual will tell you where it is. In my 2005 Corsa C it is right under the hood, but it can also be somewhere inside your car. When you have access to your fuse box, take out your multimeter and set it to 20 volts DC. Connect the negative wire to your car's body. Use your fuse removal tool to remove one fuse after the other and use the positive wire of your multimeter to measure both of the slot's pins. In this case you can see one measures 12 volts, even though the key is not plugged in. This is a slot that you would use for devices such as a central door locking system, or in our case for a charger. You can also see that the other pin measures something like 0 volts, but why? Well, because it's the output. And what does it mean? Let me explain it to you using my graphic design skills. Imagine this to be a fuse slot. The input is connected to the positive terminal of your battery and the output goes to your original circuit. When you insert the adder fuse adapter it offers two slots. One is for the original fuse that as usual completes your original circuit. While the top slot is for a new fuse and connects the input to your new circuit. But what happens if you connected the one way around? Well, as you can see, your new circuit won't work if the original fuse is not inserted. And even worse, if both fuses are inserted, the current for your new circuit runs through both fuses, which will eventually cause the bottom fuse to burn out and both circuits won't work. This is something you don't want, of course. That's why you have to keep in mind where your input and where your output is, and remember it for inserting the added fuse adapters. Mark your fuse and keep on measuring other slots. This slot for example shows 0 volts on both pins. Now you take your key, plug it in and turn it to position 1. As you can see now it shows 12 volts. This is a slot that you would connect for example your radio to. You keep on measuring that way until you found all the fuses that you're go going to need. After you're finished Remove your key from the lock and disconnect the battery. Now you need to find a way from your fuse box to the place where you want to mount your device. This is the part where it gets very car specific. 
And if you don't want to see how I did it in my car, you can skip the next few seconds. However, I will show you how to do it. First thing you're gonna do is remove your wiper arm. As you probably don't do it very often, it might be rust welded to the fret. For this I have a little trick. You use a wrench and a hammer. Yep, you heard me, a hammer to smash your car if everything goes wrong. Just kidding, you use a kitchen towel to protect your car. Put the wrench around the fret and push upwards while carefully hammering from the top. After a few hits, your wiper arm will come off. Open the hood and start removing the water reflector. It is tricky but you can actually squeeze it through. Be careful because you can't fully remove it as the cleaning nozzles are still attached. Just put it to the side and keep on removing the BCM box top and squeeze it out. Here you can see a common problem with the Corsa C. The sealant of the body control module tends to corrode after some time, which allows water to flow into your footwell. You can easily replace it using some window sealant. Now we made our way through to the inside of the car. You can even see the driver's side footwell from here. The next obstacle is this packed rubber tubing. To get your cables through this, you only need some garden wire. You can either use thick wire and cover the tip in isolation tape or shrink tubing to prevent it from poking through the rubber tube. Or you do it like me and take a thinner wire and fold it four times, so that you get a round tip. You now take your special tool and squeeze it through. This is probably the trickiest part and it might freak you out. Please don't start smashing your car with the hammer. When you're finally finished, hook the cable up to the end of the wire and fix it with some tape. Pull it all the way through and pull as much cable through as you need. Now it's time to connect your cables to the added fuse adapters. Remove the insulation of your cable, insert it into the connector and use your crimping tool or your pair of pliers to compress the connector. I also like to wrap the connection in some isolation tape, but that's up to you. The next step is to insert the fuses. Remember, the bottom slot is for the original fuse and the top slot is for your new fuse. It might be a little bit tricky to insert them, but if you get this far, I'm sure you get it. Now insert the add a fuse adapter into your fuse slot. Remember the input output thing I mentioned at the beginning. Now reassemble everything you just took apart. Here you can see the wires running into the car. We're now on the inside and want to get to the middle console, so we need to remove some inner trim panels. We're going to start with the panel beneath the steering wheel. First remove this little storage compartment and then unscrew the panel and take it out. Now unscrew the four screws that hold the center console in place. You can now lift the center console up a little bit. You can't completely remove it as that would require to remove the whole dashboard, but you can lift it up for easier access. We are now making a grounding for our circuits. I'm using three wires and crimping them down in one ring connector. It's not the best way to do it, but I'm also going to solder it to the ring connector and add some shrink tubing. I fixed it to a screw in the bottom of my car. You can see it here. Now it's time to run the wire through the center console. I even removed my radio for better access. When you're finally through, you add crimp connectors to the ends of the cable. I also needed to make a hole to connect the switches. As I wasn't able to use a drill in the tight space, I used my soldering iron to melt a hole and a drill to hand drill my way through. It took a long period of time, but at least I didn't have to take the dashboard off. As I plan on connecting more than one device, I made this nice little panel out of a piece of plastic that I bent and covered with sailor's cloth. It includes three switches, our charter and a 12 volt output. I also already soldered wires to the switches, two for the extra switch and two for the angel eye illumination. Now it is time to hook everything up. This schematic shows how I connected the charger and the switches illumination. 
You can see that the positive terminal of the switch's illumination is connected to my car's original illumination pin, which I have available because I mount the panel right where my original 12 volt output was located. I'm not going to use the original wires because they only have power when the key is in position 2 and I want to be able to charge my phone even when the car is parked and locked. You can also connect the illumination this way so that it indicates when your device is turned on. Time for a quick test. Let's first check the illumination. I will flip the switch and it comes on and looks beautiful. Next thing to check is the charger and it has power. So before I'm going to plug my smartphone in, I'm going to use this little USB device to check if the output voltage is 5 volt. And it is. So let's connect my smartphone slash camera and you can see it, but it works. Secure the wires and start reassembling your interior. Congratulations, you now successfully added a new device to your car's electrical system. Let's see it in action. Hey, you've actually watched through the whole video. This is actually my first video project of this kind and my first YouTube video ever. I spent a lot of effort on doing this, I filmed it only using my smartphone and a friend's tripod and did, it, uh, did the post production using Premiere Pro which cost me a lot of time but I hope it was worth it. I tried to make it short and easy to understand and of course not too boring. Would be interesting to know if I achieved that goal so you can leave feedback if you want. You can also find a written version of this whole video on my Instructables page, just head over there, I'll put the link in the description. And you can also follow me there. I'm planning on doing some more videos like this in the future. So you can stay tuned and I'll see you next time.